Welcome to module 53 of Point Set Topology course, part 1. Today we will continue the study of normal spaces, characterization of normal spaces. Normal spaces. Last time we did characterization due to Urizon. Now we will do the characterization due to Tisse. The Tisse's characterization is another landmark, but it actually uses the you know Urizon's characterization, construction of continuous functions. But it is quite mysterious in the sense that here we have only one closest set. So so it requires quite a ingenious, uh, uh, you know, mind to have explored this one. So it is not at all easy to come up with this kind of idea. So let us look at the uh, statement here. A topological space X is normal if and only if it satisfies the following condition, which I have put as is the condition. So what is the condition? Given any closed subset E of X and a continuous function G from E to minus 1 plus 1, there exists a continuous function F from X to minus 1 plus 1 such that F restricted to E is G. Okay, obviously here E is a non-empty closed subset. Okay, that is otherwise we don't have any continuous function G from E to minus 1 plus 1. So this is the hypothesis given a closed subset and a continuous function. Okay, so there is no need to worry about that E being closed, E being a uh, empty and so on. So every continuous function defined on a closed set can be extended to a continuous function, retaining the codomain as it is, namely any closed interval. So model we are using minus 1 to plus 1. I have already told you that you can always change the, the uh, codomain to any closed interval each time. Okay. So that is not very crucial. But now instead of 0, 1 as in uh, the previous theorem, we will use minus 1 plus 1, which is more convenient for the writing down the for writing down the proof. Okay. Assume that X satisfies the T, T C. Given any two disjoint closed subsets A and B, subset E put E equal to A union B, and apply this condition to get a function G from minus one to plus one, namely G of X equal to minus one and G of uh, on x beyond a and g of x equal to plus 1 and x equal p. Okay. G is continuous because a and b are disjoint closed sets. Okay. So this makes sense. Only two values you have taken. On a it is minus 1, on b it is plus 1. But now g will extend to a whole function from x to minus 1 plus 1. So there is an F here so that F restricted to E is G. Okay. So that is the condition for the Urizon's characterization, UC. Therefore, X is normal by the above theorem. All right. 
So we have taken a shortcut here, used uh, Urizon's uh, characterization instead of trying to prove open subsets, etc. All right. But in the converse proof also, we are going to use Urizon's theorem. So one way is all, uh, done. Now let us prove the converse. Again, the converse is taking up some time. <laughs> Assume x is normal and E contained as x is closed and map G is given. Okay. G is defined only on E and it's continuous there. We have to construct a map F from x2 minus 1 plus 1 such that F restricted to E is G. So here we should use the fact that set of all continuous functions from x to minus 1 plus 1 okay they form a banach algebra banach space remember that with the supremum norm remember that we had introduced the set of all x to r or c or whatever and then we took the bounded functions there on which we put the supremum norm. Now, if we have continuous functions, continuous functions on x, okay, they may not be bounded, but here I am taking they are bounded by actually minus 1 plus 1. The, the values are inside minus 1 plus 1. So, this will be a subspace of that Banach algebra. All right. This norm makes sense because now all functions are taking values from minus 1 plus 1. Okay, we also saw that the, the continuous functions okay, form a closed subspace of this Banach algebra and therefore this itself as a, is, as a normal linear space, it is a Banach algebra. That means Cauchy sequences will converge inside this one, which just means that if you take a Cauchy sequence of continuous functions from x to minus 1 plus 1, you can take the limit in the larger space, but that limit is continuous. Therefore, it is in the smaller space. Okay. So, this also you have seen. The, the convergence with respect to the supremum norm is nothing but automatically it's uniform convergence. Okay, so this is what we are going to use. Essentially, if you don't want to use all these terminologies, all that just means that if you have a sequence of continuous real world functions, okay, which converges uniformly, you know, sequence of continuous uniformly to a function, that function is continuous. So this is the fact that comes out of uh, ordinary uh, analysis, so which we are going to use it now here. Okay, how do we are going to use? Inductively, we shall construct a sequence fn from x to minus 1 plus 1 such that summation fi, this is a partial sums, that is a sequence, not fn. The partial sum, that sequence converges uniformly to a function f from x2 minus 1 plus 1. And it has this property that norm of g minus i ring to 1 to fi converges to 0. This norm, because g is only defined on E, should be taken on E. So same norm restricted to E. Okay. So all these fi is restricted to E. Of course, fi makes sense on the whole of x, but g makes only on e. So you have to take c of e x. Okay. So that is the meaning of this one. So this is what we want to do now. So I will explain these things kind of more carefully in what comes here. Put rn equal to 2 power n minus 1 divided by 3 power n. Take g naught equal to g, having defined the map gn from 
e to r for some n inductively we are going to construct the next gn plus 1 so for that put an equal to gn inverse of minus 1 to r minus rn and bn equal to gn inverse of rn to 1 then clearly an and bn are disjoint closed subsets of e okay which itself is closed in x therefore an and bn are disjoint closed subsets of x hence by eudiomus lemma we get a continuous function chi an bn uh, from x to minus 1 plus 1 remember this chi an bn is a continuous function which has the property that on an it is equal to minus 1 and on bn equal to plus 1 that is all we are going to use it here okay after that we put fn equal to rn times chi of an bn <coughs> finally <coughs> we define gn plus 1 as gn minus fn restricted to e <coughs> gn is defined on e already fn is defined on the whole of x but we take fn restricted to e and Take g n plus one to be g n minus f n restricted to e on the subset e. <coughs> the induction inductive definition of the sequence f n and g n is over. Next task is to show that these things converge to whatever we wanted to. Namely, first of all, g n and f n are both continuous. norm of gn is equal to rn times norm of chi n an chi n an bn that is 1 therefore it is rn and since summation rn 1 to infinity is actually 1 so it dominates this norm of rn it just means that i ring to 1 to n fi converge is uniformly to the function so from one function continuous function of automatically because uniform conversion and it takes value between minus 1 and plus 1 okay so this function f is now continuous because it is continuous it is a uh, uniform limit of finitely many f i s here and then n tends to infinity So these f i is finitely many f i; they are continuous. It tends to infinity, uniform convergence. Therefore, f is uniformly uni f is continuous. We now claim that the second part, namely norm of G n on E, that is supremum of all G n x modulus G n x, r x range for. x range is over e right that is the definition we want to say that this is less than equal to twice r n minus 1 again the proof will be by induction when n equal to 0 r minus 1 is nothing but 1 by 2 okay and twice r n is 1 and g not is our function g which is taking value between minus 1 plus 1 therefore norm of g not on e is less than or equal to 1 okay so assume that this statement is true for some n then we shall prove it for n plus 1 okay so let us uh, examine what happens to the function gn plus 1 suppose x is inside an by the very definition of an gn of x will be between minus 1 to minus rn so it is less than equal to minus rn on the other hand the induction hypothesis says that minus twice rn minus 1 twice rn minus 1 is less than equal to gn x the modulus of this one is less than equal to twice rn minus 1 this is the definition of, this is the induction hypothesis so if you put them together now you subtract fn subtracting fn fn is fn is now 
on a n it is minus r n right. So, adding r n. So, what I get is minus 2 r n which you can verify is same thing as minus 2 r n minus 1 plus r n that is less than or equal to this is g n of x plus r n but this is the same thing as g n plus 1 of x now because plus r n is same thing as minus of f n ok. So, g n is less than or equal to minus r n here r n plus r n is less than or equal to 0 and 0 is definitely less than or twice r n plus 1 ok. Exactly similar reason not exactly same reason when you take x equal to x, x is inside b n this becomes now minus f n becomes minus r n and we will have left and right and etcetera you have to correctly choose finally you will get a similar thing namely what you get is that minus 2 r n is less than or equal to g n plus 1 of x less than or equal to plus 2 r n. So, what remains now look at a point which is neither in a n or in b n ok take a point which is nor in a n nor in b n ok then both a n and g n are in the interval minus r n to r n by definition because if it is not in a n it is bigger than minus r n not in b n it is less than r n less than or equal to r n ok. So, such a point automatically satisfies g n plus 1 of x ok less than or equal to r n plus r n and bigger than or equal to minus r n plus minus r n. So, in modulus is less than or equal to r n because both f n and g n are inside this one f n is always just minus r n times 1 minus 1 to plus 1 r n times minus 1 to plus 1 ok. So, this completes the proof of inductive claim that namely g n of e is less than equal to twice r n minus 1 for the same reason because summation r n is convergent this is dominated by this twice this these things it will follow that g n of x converges to 0 as n tends to infinity because these things converge to 0 ok. Now, what is this g that mysterious thing why g and g n that is clear because g n is nothing but remainder after n terms ok. I could not say that one because before that I have to show that the series is convergent. So, we have shown that g n converges uniformly to 0 inside e, but now if x is belong to e g n plus 1 is g n x minus f n of x by definition. What is g n x? g n minus 1 x minus f n minus 1 of x. So, you club them together it will be the g n minus 1 x minus f n minus 1 plus f n of x. But again you apply it to g n minus 1 it will be g n minus 2 minus f n minus 2 of x plus all these. So, go on doing that till you hit g naught g naught is g x and this term will become summation i ring to 1 to n f n x first f n f n minus 1 etc up to f 1 all these terms will come so g n plus 1 is nothing but g x minus i ring to 1 to n f i of x this is the second term there in the in the condition we wanted to show that norm of this converges to 0 norm of this same thing as g n plus 1 of norm, norm of this one and we have shown that this converges to 0 ok. So, you see this is nothing but inside E this is just the partial sum ok and this is the remaining after n term that is the whole idea. Upon taking the limit this is 0 this will be become f now because i ring to 1 to infinity is our f right. So, g x minus f x norm is 0 which just means that g x equal to f x 
So these all happening for every x in sac t. So that completes the proof of T says theorem. So let me make a few comments here. Yeah. Since any two closed intervals, I am making this comment again of positive length are homeomorphic. Okay. We can use instead of minus 1 plus 1 or 0, 1, we can use any interval AB. Okay. But in the proof of the above theorem, it was crucial that the codomain was a closed interval. You are going to take limits of certain, uh, for each point you are taking limits. So they are just point, they are just values. So the limit point could be in the end points. I mean, that is possible, right? So even if you start with the function, suppose the function given g is taking values in the open interval. Extended function may not be taking values inside the open interval. It may hit A or B. That is possible. Okay. Yes or no? So, because when, if you take open intervals, you know, open interval is not uh, complete. So, you can't use all these completion results. So that is the whole idea. Okay. But you look at the statement of the T theorem, that will not suffer. In other words, I want to have a theorem. Suppose G is a function from a closed interval to an open interval. Then I can extend it from X to open interval itself. So that is the statement. Okay. So that is not the part of the statement, but it's extra statement. We have to work out and there is a trick which will help us to prove such a theorem. So let us do that. So this is the statement here. So I have stated a separate theorem that x p a normal space e contains x closed. Then given any continuous function g from e to open interval minus 1 plus 1, there exists a continuous function f from x to open interval minus 1 plus 1, such that f restricted to e is g. Okay. Directly from the theorem that we have proved, this one does not follow. That is what I made remark. Okay. What follows? You can think of this as closed interval taking by taking inclusion of this one in closed interval then you will get a extension half of the closed interval. Right? So that much is true. Now, how to come back to the open interval? Here is a trick. Apply T's extension theorem 4.39 to the map G treated as a function from E to minus 1 plus 1. We obtain a continuous function F1. Let us call it F1 because this is not going to F from x to minus 1 plus 1 such that restricted to e it is g. What may happen is look at f1 inverse of minus 1 and plus 1. Just the two points. Put that as a. That is a closed subset. This may be empty. If a is empty then we are happy. That means x is inside open interval minus 1 plus 1. If A is not empty, then we have to work harder. Okay. In any case, A is a closed subset of X disjoint from E. Why? Because to begin with, we have started with a G such that G is taking 
value strictly inside minus 1 plus 1. And f restricted to E is G. So this A and E are disjoint subsets and both of them are closed. Hence, you can apply Euridomus lemma here okay, to get another function h from x to 0, 1 such that h of a is 0 and h of e is 1. So you see here I am using again 0, 1 instead of minus 1 plus 1. So that is as a it, you know, it's de deliberate, it's not just it is not just arbitrary, okay. So h of a is 0 and h of e is 1. So whole idea is you don't want to disturb the e part. So you have put it is 1 here. You don't want this a part. So you have killed it. h of a is 0. That is the whole idea. Now you multiply the original f1 with hx. Take fx equal to hx into f1 of x. Okay. This is a product of two functions, both of them taking values in minus 1 plus 1. Uh, minus 1 plus 1 and other one 0, 1 anyway. So this will take values in minus 1 plus 1. There is no problem and it's continuous. And when you put x equal to x inside e, this hx is 1. So it is f1 of x, which is g the original g. Therefore, that is also over. All that you have to show is that the new function f takes values inside minus 1 plus 1 open. Right? Then the theorem is over. Okay, why it doesn't take the value minus 1 and plus 1? That is what I have to show. Alright, so suppose modulus of fx is equal to 1. But what is modulus of fx? What is fx? fx is hx into f1 of x. Okay, suppose for some x it is equal to 1. Either it is minus 1 or plus 1. Then f1 of x is less than or equal to 1 modulus and hx is inside 0, 1 for all x. Remember that we must have modulus of fx is actually equal to 1. Even if any one of them is smaller than 1, the product will not be equal to, modulus will not be equal to 1. Okay. So both the modulus must be equal to 1. hx modulus doesn't make sense because this is already positive, non-negative. So it's actually equal to x. If hx is 1, after multiplying by hx, what do you get? f1 of x is equal to f1 modulus of x is equal to but modulus of x, f1 of x is equal to 1 implies x is inside a. Remember that a was defined as f1 inverse of minus 1 as well as plus 1. But then h is 0. h of a is 0. But just now we have h of a is 0 with the right hand side will be 0. This can't be 1. So we have shown that h is also 1. So that contradiction proves that modulus of fx is never equal to 1. Okay. So I have said that this is a trick. This kind of tricks are used uh, quite often in algebraic topology also. So, in summary, what we have proved is T section theorem, the codomain can be replaced by any bounded open interval instead of a closed interval. But R is homeomorphic to any open interval, therefore, you can take the whole of R also. Finally, if you carefully watch the proof of the above theorem, you will notice that it can be easily adopted to half open intervals also. If you don't want both of them, you have to work only for one of them. That A which you have taken F inverse of minus 1 plus 1, you take A into only one of them. Okay, inverse of one of them. So, it will work for 
half open intervals also okay therefore all these statement can be collectively called as t's extension theorem for normal spaces given continuous function on a closed set taking values in open ab open r closed ab closed a open b whatever whatever you take the codomain okay in the same codomain there is a continuous extension of the function g to a function f on the whole of x so that is the way you have to understand t sections and theorem at various places whichever form is necessary for you you can use that all right urizon's characterization of normal space drew a lot of attention tiknov came up with an idea of adopting a somewhat weaker version of the urizon's characterization but one is stronger than regularity so another concept came in between what is called as complete regularity a space x is called completely regular if it satisfies the following condition given a closed subset f of x and a point x belonging to x minus f remember this was the hypothesis for a regularity instead of two disjoint closed subsets one closed subset and a point outside it okay so then instead of open sets and so on now you have function now there exists a continuous function f from x to 0 1 such that f of x is 0 and f of capital f is 1 so this is a perfect mixture of regularity condition and urizon's criteria a mixture such a thing is called complete regular space as usual normality does not imply cr simply because singletons may not be closed the complete the this uh, complete regularity is an important concept in metrizability problems even the urizon's lemma i think urizon had finally to try to prove some you know embeddability results through which he wanted to prove metrization that is why he he explored this one he he came up with this uh, uh, what is so called as so called uh, urizon's lemma now okay so this this uh, complete regularity is important in in metrizability problem that will be discussed and taken up in part two so i am just giving you a glimpse of that even if you forget it is okay so i think you are now convinced that why uh urizon's lemma is so important all right so let us uh, meet next time thank you